You might have noticed we've been AWOL from YouTube for a few days. It is a beautiful day today though, and we are back. We did our chicken butchering this past weekend and did what ended up being 49 birds. And that took us the better part of an entire day to get them done. And we did use a chicken plucker, which helped tremendously. But that still was a long time. I will say though, we have eaten that chicken. I just had some and it was awesome. Tasted great. Got a lot to get done and got a couple projects I need to work on. The first thing I'm gonna do is and navigate my way through my well overgrown yard past my well overgrown garden and I gotta make it out to the chicken coop so we ordered a solar powered automatic door for the coop and I thought it looked great size wise until I got it and as I was looking at it I'm like well I don't know that our larger chickens can actually fit through that so I'm gonna do a really high-tech test to see if I can make it work and I have cut open a piece of cardboard the size that the door will be I'm gonna mount that over top of their current door and see if anybody can't get in and out it might get a little I don't think it's too dark in here it's a little dark the chickens are like uh oh what's going on what's he doing I'm gonna find a place to put this camera down a minute so I can get this taped up. It's getting a little warm today. I don't know if you can hear me over the fan. Definitely have it running on high. Duct tape roll is not going to cooperate. So I think we're going to do a big overhaul inside of this coop. What's up little rooster? <laughs> little hen? Got our bantam running around. They remind me of pigeons. I don't know why. So small. But I think we're going to redo the inside of this coop. I want to really give more room for the layers to roost. And it's plenty big enough for that. But it is going to take a little material and time to make that happen. I am thinking maybe toward the end of August. Definitely didn't grab the good duct tape. I just randomly cut a hole in a piece of cardboard. I used the original door to trace out, or the new door to kind of trace out where I would need to have the hole. It actually lined up really good at the bottom of the door here. That was an accident. It smells pretty good in here today too because Kate just changed all the bedding. 
I'll be lucky if it doesn't fall off before they try to come in here. All right, I'm gonna give that a try and we'll see what happens with them trying to go in and out. I'm thinking for these laying boxes, I'd actually done some um, cover up here on the top that we don't really use. I may take that out. I was trying to make it a little bit darker and these work really good for the laying boxes themselves, but I'm thinking maybe I need to have some sort of a shield come out to give them a little bit darker area to help improve their laying. And since we've gone up so many in the way of hens now, you can actually see I've got eight laying boxes in here and I'm not certain that eight laying boxes is the right number anymore. Uh, if you were to do, you know, four, you know, hens per laying box, although typically what we'll see is like, we might have a broody one here or there just kind of hiding in there. But for the most part, um, some of these boxes, I don't think that one hardly ever gets used and this one and this one seem to get used a ton. Uh, there's another one down on here I don't think gets used a lot. Usually it's got one egg, maybe two. Most of the time I think the, the second one right here doesn't have any in it. When I come in at night anyway. But I think what I want to do is I'm going to come in over here and I may put the automatic door here and still leave this one. And the reason for the automatic door is just to make sure, you know, when the sun comes up I can get them out as early as possible. But I may end up doing some laying boxes here and here and here just to accommodate the layers. And then this has been our roosting bar set up for the longest time. And it's got the ladder that goes up. And they seem to enjoy it well. But I think what I'm gonna do is come off the roof here and put in more of a two by four type system that lifts up off the ground and makes a little more room. So that's our rooster. That's dog bite. Interesting name, we'll tell you that story if we haven't already at some point. Dog bite is one of the biggest chickens we have and then we've got our hen over here. Now she is really big. So if those two can fit through the adapted door size, then I think I'll be good to put the automatic door right here. And then we'll probably still open that one up for ventilation, but most of it would be through the new one. As you can see, our hens, we've grown a few. There are a few things with this coop that I need to do sooner rather than later. One of which is, if I can get it in, there it is. I need to get this um, birdhouse out of here. I am really concerned about other birds bringing in some kind of disease to my chickens. And this has just got to go. So that's got to be one of the first priorities that I have. The other is that automatic door so that I can get them in and out a little bit earlier of a morning. Um, not worried about closing them up because we usually check eggs every night anyway. However, I think the next thing I want to do is to put in some kind of a canopy in that back where it gives them some shade but doesn't actually let them get on top of it and then get out of the run while it's in there. So it would need to be taller than the fence and it would need to be something where we could not have to worry about wind. Uh, that one picks up a lot of the, the southwest winds that uh, we get and I'd be afraid it's gonna rip it right out. So gotta think about that when we're doing it too. Good morning, cause it is the next morning and I ran out of card space last night so I didn't get much after I did that piece on the chickens. 
spent some time working on the Highlander trying to figure out the squeal coming from the back it's a it's, it's hard to explain it was a, a very hollow metal on metal kind of whine almost a squalling not a squealing but a squalling sound so I'm not certain what entirely it was I, I really don't know it's hard to identify I was pretty sure it was coming from the right rear so I took the caliper apart well then take the caliper apart I took the wheel off to access the caliper I took the brake pads out checked pin grease the brake pads themselves where they go into the little glides spring clip glides they were dry they were kind of uh, crusty with road grime and you know just stuff so anyway I cleaned those up they weren't rusted or anything too bad but they did a little bit of rust on them cleaned them up re-greased the slides put everything back together again took them for a test drive and now I'm only getting the noise when it comes right down to about the end of the braking so right kind of as you completely come to a slot stop or when you first um, release the brake from slowing down so I, I had a couple people recommend to me oh my god turn the barn on I had a couple people recommend to me that it could be the wheel bearing but I don't feel that's the case because if it was the wheel bearing I would hear it at highway speeds and uh, Noel took it for a drive this morning to take one of the kids to school and it only made the noise when it was braking so I still think it's in the brake pad assembly somewhere maybe it's something I didn't get back together 100% right maybe it's just noise based on the type of pads that I ended up buying for it I don't know but we'll keep you updated on what happens there I only did the one side so I may tear the other side down and take a look at that as well um, but that isn't gonna happen this morning what is gonna happen this morning is me figuring out a more effective way to do this this was what I had worked on last night for the chicken door and as you can see they just tore the bottom right off and knocked it down so that that was a fail win some lose some today I'm gonna do it a little bit different I'm actually gonna go out and um, because I have a sliding door that I raised to let them out I'm going to uh, put kind of a wire on the clip and make it so the door only raises to the height I need. Now it still won't fix the width but it will give me a better idea if they can fit through on the height which is my bigger concern. So I'm gonna get this camera set up so I can do some work. I'm gonna slide into the coop. I'm gonna fix that and we'll see if they get out this morning. It is cold out this morning and being in front of that vent is no exception. I think I need to raise it. Oh. I think I need to raise it to about 11 inches.
I'm going to have a little bit of an overlap here at the bottom. I want to make certain that I account for that. So I'm probably going to set it at about 12 inches. Overlapped actually two inches. Got a few that don't want to come out. They don't know what to think because it's not open all the way, I think. Do you have a 10-inch opening height, and that is about the size of what this automatic chicken door is going to be? And we did get the larger birds, the rooster and the larger bird, out, so I think that's a good sign. The next step, I think I'm going to go ahead and move forward with putting in this door. I think I'm going to put it in over here. Leave that one in place, put it in over here. Um, mainly because the roosting... Uh, or the roosting bars are on this side, but the nesting boxes are on that side right now. And I think I want them going in and out underneath the roosting bars where I can't really put anything else out anyway. Sounds like a plan for the day. Okay, ladies. <clears throat> gentlemen. I made through. Pardon me. Hello. <laughs> yep, call them to breakfast. <laughs> breakfast. One of the things we need to do is take a really hard look at how much money we're putting into the cost of feed and the production we're getting off the hens right now. I don't know what that will change, but it definitely needs to um, be something we need to look at. Just so we know whether or not we're making money on the eggs that we do sell. Now, a good number of those eggs we keep to, to use for ourselves and a lot of these newer birds, the white ones, uh, they are laying now, and they're the primary layers for what I think we're getting. But um, we might look at selling off some of last year's layers if uh, if they are laying and they're just, you know, they're not going to lay as well this winter. What's the matter? Here. Put the poor little hand in there. That poor little bantam doesn't do anything to harm you. Oh, I can't get the feed without scaring it away.
There you go. Poor little bantam. Smallest kid in the schoolyard. Alright, well, I'm gonna let these ladies eat. I got other chores I need to get to. Get the rest of this feed out for them. We'll update you when we do a little bit more math on the number of birds. So excitable. I do want to tag them. I do have leg tags for each one of these, which are just little plastic clips with numbers on them. I want to kind of separate them out. I've got three colors, but I want to separate them out into kind of who are more of our original batches, who were last year's new layers, who's this year's new layers, um, just so I can get kind of a good head count on where we are and where we're going to go from here. The house is definitely large enough with the roosting I could put in here. It's definitely large enough for them. But again, the new layers for this year are going to be the ones to carry us through the winter. And I do have my concerns on how many eggs we're getting on a daily basis right now compared to the number of hens we have. So we'll just see where that conversation takes us. I'm not necessarily looking to remove anyone from a flock anytime in the near future, but definitely have to look at how much money gets put in because I'm talking a five gallon bucket of feed a day just to keep all these birds in check. So we'll check back on where we are with the hens, the eggs, and how much feed we're going through. As you can see, still need to change out these wheels because you know, kind of have an automatic braking system. Can't go very far. Still sitting on my cart. I do have the new tires though. All right, release the turkeys. Good morning. Come on out, turkey. There you are. You guys are just more curious than anything. Yeah. But cooler out here this morning, isn't it? Are you going back to bed? Yeah, they just want to go back in because I think there are no chickens in there right now. Alright, we'll leave you to it. This is our next round of broiler chicks. They're happy and healthy. This brooder coop, it's really about eight feet by eight feet, which is extremely large. But they'll grow into it. And they'll be in here for about three weeks. This is coming up on the end of, I think the second week. Somewhere around in there. 
They'll get to go out on grass soon. Wow, today has absolutely flown by and I didn't get the time to get the door installed at the chicken coop today, but I promise that'll come in a future video very soon. Uh, see how that turns out, see how they like it. Um, it is going to be the door and a solar panel that goes up for it, and I'm sure I need to figure out some programming on it. So it, it should be an interesting view. Um, thank you very much for watching today. I appreciate you spending some time with us. And, of course, don't forget, like, subscribe, hit the bell for notification. Even if you think you should already be getting notified, it never hurts to check and make sure that feature hasn't been disabled for you. Sometimes I've heard that um, it is getting turned off somehow. Um, and they need to go back in and turn it back on. So thank you for watching, and I look forward to talking to you all on the next episode.